Makram Gassis is an exiled Sudanese bishop operating the Nubas only and very tenuous lifeline from his base in nearby Kenya. While the major relief organizations have been allowed to operate in the south, Bishop Gassis has had to resort to secret flights into the Nuba Mountains, which have been cut off by government troops and warplanes. The combination of the military blockade and famine have devastated the Nubas. They have lost nearly a third of their people in the past decade. The gap between hunger and famine, I would say that's when you know, the, the human body just deteriorates so much over a period of months that physically now you cannot go out. And I think that's the problem, is that as you say it always comes too late because people say, oh, well, these people are not thin, you know, they're not, they're not starving, they're all right. And yet suddenly it all just falls apart. I'm a bit of a coward. I actually hate flying in planes. I'm terrified and I hate heights. A different kind of fear caused Angela Mason to fly to Bosnia and to cross this mangled bridge into the devastated city of Mostar. It was the fear of doing nothing to help the women of Bosnia. I think it's so easy for us to sit back and think, oh, that's so ghastly, what can I do? And we, we want to do something, then we go to bed, and the next morning we've woken up and we forgot about it. But I think it's time now for the women to help these women, to show them that, that they really do care, that we care in other countries. Too many television reports of raped and homeless women and too little American support launched this former personnel recruiter from El Cerrito, California, on her self-appointed mission to generate some aid and comfort for Bosnian women. I've been blessed with a very big mouth and I fully intend to use that big mouth to talk to everybody who listened to me back home. Putting her communication and networking skills to work, she talked humanitarian agencies into letting her hitch rides on their relief convoys, the only means of transportation in Bosnia. Eliana Gudza is the director of Worldlink Zimbabwe, a World Bank initiative to connect schools in developing countries. It has leveraged its foundation grants and corporate support to cross deeper into Zimbabwe's digital divide. This mobile computer classroom makes it possible for rural students to learn the basic computer skills they need for the new and old economies. Here in Southern Africa, the digital divide is so wide and so pronounced that kids here in the rural areas have never even seen a computer. And without an outreach program like this one by Worldlinks, it's highly unlikely they'd ever even get to touch one in their lives. Iraqi women receiving their monthly payments from America, which are neither government grants nor traditional humanitarian aid. This money is coming from individual Americans who are not necessarily rich. California women like Athena Katsoros and Ahala Ayla, who have pledged $25 a month to adopt an Iraqi woman for a year. I love the idea of having a person whose picture I have, whose name I know. The motivation for me is coming at it one to one. Rahek and Raja, their Iraqi sisters as they call them, are depending on these monthly donations as their only source of income. Most of our boys and husbands, she says, are gone or unemployed. The past 13 years of war, political persecution and unemployment have stripped Iraqi families of many of their husbands and providers. It's a post-war dilemma Zaina Salbi's organization Women to Women International has been addressing on a one-to-one -one basis from Bosnia to Afghanistan and now her native Iraq, working out of her grandfather's home. 